Hi, this is the Tropical Tip for Thursday evening, September 10th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. Well, it's still quite busy in the Atlantic, and it's only going to get busier over the next week or two. We have several areas of interest. We have uh, the Invest 94L that we were talking about has now moved inland over North Carolina, and as expected, is only bringing some showers to the region, not much to write home about. We also have a disturbance to the south of 94 that we're going to be watching. We have Tropical Storm Paulette, Tropical Storm Rene, and a new tropical wave that has emerged off of Africa that we're going to be tracking for a while uh, as we head down through the rest of this week and next week. We're going to start off with what's close to the United States here. We have, again, 94 went inland. I'm not going to discuss that anymore as it's no longer a threat for tropical development and is bringing only minor weather to the region. And then we have some stuff going on to the south. Now, uh, the NHC is now highlighting the system we've been talking about for a couple of days now uh, near the Bahamas, and they're also highlighting this area in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And I'm going to kind of discuss both of these at the same time here. If we look at the close-up satellite picture as the sun sets, we'll see this large field of shallow to moderate convection to the northeast of the Bahamas. And we see maybe a little bit of mid-level rotation in here, but there is no surface low at the moment. If we assess the surface wind direction, we see east wind to the north, and we see east wind to the south of the Bahamas as well, and the wind in the middle is also out of the east. So we really don't have even a strong trough here necessarily at the surface. What we do have is a little bit of background vorticity or spin because the winds on the north side are a little bit stronger out of the east than they are on the south side. So there's a little bit of sheer vorticity there. And this is the kind of setup where you have this area of percolating convection that over an extended period of time can cause the development of a stronger surface trough or surface low, a circulation, because of the heat that's released from those thunderstorms. But this is a slow process in a setup like this. But given enough days, we could see something like that occur. And so as this continues to move westward, likely near uh, the southern part of the Florida Peninsula and into the northeastern Gulf of Mexico over the coming days, this will be something to potentially watch. Now here's the GFS forecast showing mid-level relative humidity and wind barbs and the sea level pressure in black contours. We can see kind of the, the mid-level moisture and a little bit of rotation there where we see the thunderstorms on satellite imagery. And this is just going to continue uh, generally westward along with this mid-level flow south of the subtropical ridge across the Florida Peninsula. We see that as we go forward here, by the time we get to Saturday morning, we can see a slightly more amplified mid-level trough uh, southeast of Miami and as we continue even further now into Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon we see a little bit of a low try to develop west of Florida. This is pretty weak on this model depiction and models in general haven't been really excited about generating any kind of strong storm out of this but they're also still adjusting to the initial conditions in the sense that they haven't done a good job seeing that this area of disturbed weather is there. If you look at the European model for instance if you look at its forecast for tomorrow morning, you can see that it's now seeing a trough here, but prior runs didn't have nearly as much. And so we're seeing a little bit more yellow, a little bit more vorticity now, models kind of correcting towards seeing this uh, existing to the east of Florida. And as this comes across on the Euro, you do see a sharp surface trough form near the Florida Panhandle and perhaps a surface low that tries to form very late as it moves over the southeastern U.S. states. Again, <clears throat> not very exciting model forecasts yet for this, uh, but given that it's going to have low shear over the next three to four days and time over water, uh, things are favorable in general. And this would be something that you definitely want to watch uh, sometimes models do miss things like this. For example, Hurricane Hannah was similar to this in some ways when it drifted, drifted across the Gulf for three to four days before developing near Texas, and models did not predict that one at all. So it's something to keep an eye on given how close it is to land. This is definitely not something you want to trust. Uh, but for now, not really expecting high chances of development, more on the low to medium side. NHC is giving it a 40% chance to develop, and we'll keep an eye on things uh, over the coming days. Right now, it's just going to be a shower maker for South Florida and the Bahamas during the weekend, and perhaps beyond into the Northeast Gulf Coast, uh, whether or not this develops, likely to bring wet weather as it comes toward the west. 
It's also worth briefly mentioning this other trough to the west of Florida here. This has also been tagged in the NHC outlook with a 20% chance of development. This is probably less, uh, less of a chance than this one. Uh, given that as it comes toward the west, there's a lot of dry air in the central Gulf of Mexico right now, and we can see that on the GFS forecast, which if we go back here just at the beginning, we can see this other trough, and there's just a lot of dry air to its southwest, and what this is going to do is come westward and then maybe bend toward the south a little bit over the next couple of days, and you'll see that it continues to meander here, but there's a lot of dry air in the ambient environment and so this is this seems likely to limit that particular little trough uh, significantly and no models are showing development certainly less chances it would seem compared to the one that's coming out of the east here that one would probably have higher chances than the one to the west so we're not too concerned about this one right now maybe a few showers raking the northwest gulf coast in association with that but really uh, nothing to be concerned about at this time if we go out to the big view, we're going to switch now away from the U.S. and towards some of our other storms. And uh, this one, Tropical Storm Paulette, could be a long-term threat here to Bermuda uh, in a few days. If we take a look at the close-up view of the storm here, we continue to have a sheared Paulette. We've been talking about the shear that the storm is going to have to deal with. And we can see very strong southwest flow aloft here. The low-level circulation is currently located on the southern side of this convective mass to the north due to the southwest shear pushing those thunderstorms toward the northeast side. And uh, the storm is holding together, though, in general. It is not showing signs of dissipating, and we do have a fairly vigorous rotation here. And if this is able to survive the next few days of shear, it may have a chance to become a stronger storm as it nears Bermuda. We can see on the GFS uh, the upper level potential vorticity shows in orange here the upper level trough that is now interacting with Paulette, which is here. This is Renee to the east. And this trough is going to stay around for the next couple of days as Paulette is moving into the trough and dealing with the shear that results. But what's going to happen eventually is we go out a couple days here, we are going to see the tut split or see this trough split where we get a cutoff upper low to the southwest of Paulette. And you can see it start to nose some blue colors in here and start to split this trough into two pieces. And when that happens, we may see the shear start to die down because once this cuts off, we start to change the upper level flow toward more out of the southeast over Paulette and more aligned with the storm's steering vector. And that may lower the shear and allow Paulette to start recovering and maybe strengthening some as it comes toward the west. And we do see that on the GFS with a strengthening hurricane forecasted by Sunday. This is a change from a couple of days ago when models were a little bit less optimistic about Paulette's intensity and had it quite weak at this time. Uh, but over the last 24 hours or so, modeling has suggested that Paulette is going to be much stronger now that we can see it surviving the shear in a decent way. We're not seeing it fall apart or get elongated like it was forecasted to before. So now we're expecting that once the shear goes down, it has a better chance to intensify. And if we look at the steering for this too, this is back at the beginning, so here's Paulette, there's Bermuda, and we have this ridge to the northwest of the storm to start off. Now the storm is going to move northwest initially before it hits the edge of that ridge, so we'll see that here, northwest, uh, northwest movement, and then we see a new ridge developing near the eastern seaboard of the U.S., and this is going to move toward the east while Paulette is moving toward the west. So this ridge is going to initially block the storm's northward progress, and we're going to see Paulette make a little bit of a left turn here. And you'll see that on the model, almost moving due west as this ridge builds to the north of the storm. But again, this ridge is moving. So once the ridge moves off to the east, the storm is going to turn back toward the right. You can see that here as Paulette begins to turn near or west of Bermuda, and then off it goes into the middle of the ocean into the jet stream, perhaps getting close to Canada in the very long range. But right now, the most immediate concern is to the island of Bermuda, as the model guidance is uncomfortably close to the island in general at days four and five. That would be around Monday or Tuesday. And again, could be a pretty powerful storm at this point, 
given that shear will have come down a bit and will be less hostile to the storm. This is the NHC forecast showing basically all of that with the northwest movement, a little bend to the left and then a bend to the right. And the island of Bermuda is right there near the forecast position on Monday afternoon, Monday evening, somewhere around there. There's still a lot of spread in the forecasts. In other words, models are not sure whether uh, Paulette's going to end up way over here before turning to the right or if it's going to even end up to the right of Bermuda. And that's largely because the storm is so sheared that models are having a tough time predicting its short-term movement because these sheared cyclones can sometimes be difficult to predict in terms of how they move because they get tugged around by the asymmetric convection on the down shear side. So there's a little bit of uncertainty of where Paulette exactly will be, but right now the consensus is uncomfortably close to the island of Bermuda, so we'll keep a close eye on that. Still about four days away, uh, but getting closer and expected to be intensifying when it makes its closest approach. Okay, the final thing we're going to talk about here is uh, the waves near Africa. We're not going to talk about Rene. This is a, a weakening storm due to shear that's going to kind of meander toward the northwest to the east of Paulette over here. And uh, Rene is not expected to be a land threat or really that interesting, but it may be drifting around and get tossed to and fro by ridges and might even come back toward the south. A bunch of things could happen with Rene, and it might get involved with uh, this wave later on down the line. But for now, not really going to talk too much about this directly. Uh, what is going to be more interesting and uh, perhaps uh, of concern uh, down the road is this wave coming off of Africa now. And uh, this is going to be moving westward over the coming days. And we have kind of two pieces to it. We have a northwestern lobe and a southeastern lobe of vorticity or spin. In general, we have a wave pocket that's kind of oriented northwest to southeast. And we can see this on the GFS uh, vorticity uh, analysis from this afternoon showing kind of this uh, elliptical region of rotation. And uh, this has been a point of contention among the model forecasts because there's a lot of uncertainty with how these kinds of monsoonal envelopes can evolve and whether or not this piece gets to the west quickly or slowly is very important for where it ends up going. So as we go forward here, we'll see this move in such a way that we see kind of the two pieces evolve here where the western piece gets out to the west and the eastern piece kind of lags behind. And then we have a second wave behind both pieces that comes off Africa. So this is a complex situation where it's difficult to predict how uh, the areas of spin will interact with each other and where they will consolidate. Now on the GFS, this western one races off ahead and goes very quickly to the west across the Atlantic. And what ends up happening is we get the formation of a storm here in the central Atlantic and then another storm way behind it near the Cabo Verde Islands. Compare that to the European model and what we end up with here, sorry, let me go back to the beginning. Uh, we end up seeing that the two pieces of the wave that we talked about are a little closer together. And because of that, the eastern one kind of holds the western one back so that it doesn't go to the west quite as quickly. And so by Sunday, uh, we end up with an elongated mess that kind of uh, eventually forms into a storm, but then turns north out of the tropical Atlantic instead of continuing toward the west. And part of this is because of Rene kind of sitting in here, like I said, might try to get involved and kind of creates a weakness uh, in the ridge into which uh, this wave could turn. That's Paulette over here. And this is the second wave that comes off behind it. We can understand this a little bit better if we look at the 500 millibar steering pattern, where this is where that wave would be by day five. And again, this is a cutoff low associated with Rene, and this would probably be here even without Rene, but Rene kind of gets tangled up in it. And that kind of sets the edge of this big ridge out over the central Atlantic. And so with this here, uh, since the euro is slower to bring this westward, it is now located on the east side of the ridge and gets pulled up by this cutoff upper low. But on the GFS, uh, we see that the western part of the wave at the same time, Tuesday morning, has come much farther to the west. Look at the difference in position. There's the euro and the GFS at the same time is much farther west. And so now it is far enough west to get caught underneath of this ridge and get directed westward into the Caribbean by this very same ridge. And so this is a very large difference in the forecast for four or five days from now, and obviously matters a lot in terms of whether this becomes a threat for the lesser and greater Antilles, the Eastern Caribbean islands in general, 
in several days. And now we can't guarantee which of these is going to come to pass. The ensembles from both the European and GFS suggest that uh, both this track and a track more like this are very possible. And it's hard to say which will come to pass. Some early indications are that perhaps this western side is more robust like the GFS says and might be coming west a little bit quicker. But uh, we really can't guarantee it. And we're just going to have to uh, watch over the next couple of days what happens with this. If we get the western scenario where this is coming west quickly and developing into a storm, then we would be talking about something that could threaten the islands by some time frame like middle of next week. Maybe Wednesday as suggested here by the GFS. But timing is not certain at this point. And beyond that, it's too early to know. Uh, beyond a week, uh, we don't know whether we're going to have a storm yet and where it's going to be. We need to get there first, see how far or how fast it's coming toward the west before we can know what might happen beyond the Caribbean. And if it curves up here instead, it'll thankfully hopefully be no threat to land as it would be in the middle of the Atlantic at that point. But we'll certainly be keeping an eye on this to see if something like this happens later next week. All right, that's it for now. Uh, we're going to continue to watch many of these systems over the next week. You will hear from me many nights for the next week or two if we have some of these storms threatening land, and we'll be tracking them for a long time. It's the peak of the hurricane season. Make sure you have a plan ready to go just in case one of these storms comes toward your region. We'll be watching for this coming into the Gulf of Mexico. We'll be watching for Bermuda as Paulette draws near, and we'll potentially be watching this wave if it comes toward the Caribbean next week. So do stay safe and stay up to date with the National Hurricane Center for the latest information. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.